so we uh, learned a little bit <coughs> about um, struct. We can make a struct of any type and we can put variables inside of that. So instead of initializing a single variable, we can initialize a series of variables that will be going together. So um, for instance, I can make a box and uh, let's say I call it let's say I call this box um, X but uh, I can ma also make it an array I can make an array of boxes let's say we have 20 bo let's say we have five boxes well I can say okay box of two dot height is equal to four Xbox of three is, or maybe four, which is the last one. Dot length is equal to ninety-nine. I can change all these boxes, but because remember, this is just like a uh, a variable type. Even though it doesn't light up in blue, it's still a, a variable type, and I can use these variables any way I want. But we'll start to see how we can structure these. Uh, hopefully we played around with that a little bit using the struct keyword if you tried using the class keyword it probably didn't work for you but we'll it's alright if it's if you used a class instead of struct they may not work for you but we'll go over that later <clears throat> just stick with struct for right now they're almost the same exact in fact there's only one difference between the two that's it just one difference <coughs> but uh, we can also make functions inside these as well. So, for instance, here I, I have a couple variables here. I want to make a function here. So, I want this to be of the type double, <coughs> and I want to call it volume. And just like anything else, I can make a double. I can call it. Actually, it doesn't need to take any parameters. Well, guess what? I can say... Well, because remember the rules of scope. That this is a scope in here. Yeah, the rules of scope still apply. Yes, the rules of scope will always apply. This is a scope here, and inside this is a scope. Well, these variables are global to this piece here. Now, I can't. I don't have access to these variables in the main function. I don't. And you can see. You might imagine already if you if you never used classes before, these can get big or very very fast. And generally, people will make separate header files and CPP files for classes only, and include them as their own little library. Oops. And yeah, and this is supposed to be length. Because obviously depth isn't a variable, so it's gonna it wouldn't know where it was. But we'll go just just look at the syntax here. That I this function here has access to all all these variables that are above it within this scope. Or even if I made a global variable, obviously every scope will have access to a global variables here. But these functions here, since they exist within this function here, or within this scope. I would say not a function. I can. I mean, this is now a function. I can call all any of these variables anytime I wish. So let let me make a box. Let's say box, and I want to call it x. So I'm going to say x dot height is equal to two. <clears throat> x dot width is equal to three. X dot length is equal to four. Then I want to say output x dot ooh, whoa 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 all right x dot volume. Now it takes no parameters. Now I should get 24, right? Four times three is 12. 12 times two is 24. 24. Because this is a function that exists within this uh, struct here. So you, you can imagine, you can get extremely creative 
with these types. So you can the, the volume will change based on I mean we'll just output we're just outputting calculations here. Notice that the volume is not a variable, it's a function. It's just going to return, you know, the volume. So if I change the height or change the width or change the depth, the volume will change. So then I can say, okay, well, I want to make another variable. Let's say I made one called um, volume, all in caps. And uh, I can say, okay, I want volume to equal x dot volume. Then I can also output volume. And there we have it. So we can use these anytime we like. This is just a uh, this is just a a function. So I want to go into a paint and I would like to make a box, you know. This is a box. And here's the top of it here. And this is going to have a Actually this should be x here. And this should be y, but it doesn't matter. So what if I wanted to find the surface area here? Well, I got this bottom area here. We're going to find the areas of all six squares. So we have x times y plus z times y. So we have x times y plus x times y. So we got plus. So we got this bottom and top here, which is the same surface area. So we got 2xy. We got the front and back here plus 2xz. And then we got um, plus 2yz. We sum those up. And that could be another function that we could use. So double. I'm going to call it SA short for surface area. It takes no parameters. We're going to say, and we can just return one value. 2 times height times width plus 2 times height times length plus 2 times length times width. Hopefully I did that right. Okay. And then that's just another function we can use to call. So maybe we want to call SA instead. And we can have a thousand different functions, we can have a thousand different things going on. And then we'll just add up it'll just add up all the areas of the box in this particular function. So uh so hopefully that just makes a little bit more sense. The only thing I threw in here other than is just uh, adding a function instead of more variables. We can add as many variables as we'd like. We can add as many functions as we would like. And this is just the introduction to two um, structs and just structs, I guess, because I mean, it could be a class too. But we'll we'll start to go over more on classes when we start dealing with public and private variables. But <clears throat> I don't want to get into that yet, so I decided to use struct. <clears throat> so, so look at the syntax here. I can just this is sloppy. I just made variables and I made I made two vari I made four variables and I made two functions. I have no organization in here, but here is what something would look like. And as I said before, we can make new header files with just this stuff in it, which is what most people do. People will make a new a new um 
a C++ a .cpp file and then I'll also make a new header file to separate the definition from the from the object but it's not worth let's just learn this first so this is what we have and this is how we can use these just more examples and I'm gonna wrap this video up and we're gonna take it a little bit farther on the next video